Hello, my name is Michael Nixick. I'm also known as the Food Mercenary, and in this DVD, we're going to show you how to make the coolest gingerbread houses around. Anybody can do this. Shelf life on my gingerbread houses, three to five years without even blinking. I've had friends keep their houses as long as 12 years. Past the life of the mortgage. It's incredible. We're going to show you how to do this start to finish. We're going to make them, and then we're going to decorate them. And we're going to begin by making the dough first. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put our margarine and our spices and our sugar in a mixing bowl first. Then we're going to turn it on and we're going to blend them thoroughly. Once the spices and the sugar and the margarine are blended thoroughly, we're going to add our flour and we're going to take our molasses and water, which is already mixed together, and we're going to add it. We're going to make sure that it's a nice, smooth dough. It should come away from the bowl without sticking, and it should not be dry or crusty around the edges. It shouldn't be breaking apart. It should be one nice, smooth ball. And that's what we're going to do right now. Now, one thing you never want to do, don't add the flour to the machine while it's running. Don't put your hands inside the bowl when the machine is running. Both are bad news. Put the flour in here while it's running and you're wearing black, everybody's going to know. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower our bowl, we're going to add our flour, we're going to add half of it. Don't worry about the over, over spill, that happens all the time. And we're going to add some of our liquid. Always mix the molasses and the water together first so that it evenly blends into your dough. This is going to be a nice one. The beauty of this recipe is that you can beat it up, roll it out, beat it up, roll it out, and it's not going to shrink up and deform on you, and it's not going to get tough and crazy. It is extremely durable, and you can use it over and over and over again without any problems whatsoever. Take a look and see how it all came out. And you'll notice that this comes out in a nice, clean dough. It comes right off. It's not sticky. It's very pliable. It holds together nicely. And just like that, it comes out nice and clean. Perfect. That's exactly how your dough should come out. There shouldn't be any flour in here. There shouldn't be anything sticky and stuck all over it. This is a perfect mix. Now it's time for us to roll out the dough. Two things you need to know right off the bat. A rolling pin, extremely important. Good rolling pins. It's all in the bearings. You have a good rolling pin. If you can hold it in different directions like this and it doesn't slow down. It's all in the bearings. Also, too, your rolling pin, when you have it on the counter like this, your knuckles shouldn't hit the counter. You should be able to roll it freely. You should have some nice weight to it. doesn't matter if it's ceramic or marble or wood. It's all in the bearings. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to roll out this dough, and we're going to cut it out with some templates that have been supplied with this DVD. Now, you can see this dough is really easy to work. It doesn't stick with my hands. Very, very pliable, easy to deal with. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll it right out onto baking paper. This is parchment paper. You can get this in any restaurant supply store around the area, but if you can't get it into pieces this big, you can go to Jules, Dominic's, or any lo local stores, your grocery stores, to get baking paper and use the same thing. It's also referred to as parchment paper. 
Now, on a surface like this, to keep the parchment paper from slipping around on you when you roll your dough out on it, what you want to do is take a damp towel, wipe the counter, and get it a little bit wet. Take the baking paper, the parchment paper, and put it on top of the area that you just got wet. Don't worry if it curls up on you a little bit, it's no big deal. Now you're going to take a little bit of flour, and put it on top of the dough, and keep it from sticking to your pin. Take your rolling pin up on top of your paper, and give it a little bit of extra flour, just like this. Okay? And now, with both hands, you apply pressure. Now what happens is, right after you start pushing down on the paper, it, it forms its own suction between the parchment paper and the damp counter, and it won't move on you. See how it sticks in place? Now if you have any problems with the dough sticking to the rolling pin, just add a little more flour. This is your lubricant. This is what's keeping it from sticking. Wooden rolling pins, perfect for rolling out dough. Nope, straighten this up. There we go. Now you're going to roll the dough out to about one eighth of an inch to a quarter inch in thickness, depending on what you want to do with your house. In this case, we're going to go to about a quarter inch. Now, if you have problems with rolling it out evenly, use a couple of dowel rods, one on each side, and let the rolling pin sit on top of the two dowel rods and just roll it back and forth, and you'll get an even thickness all the way across on your sheet. But I think I'm a little bit past that point in my career, so that's okay. You can see how you can do most anything with this dough. No bubbles, no craziness. It's a really, really excellent recipe. Okay. Now the templates that were supplied, your cutouts, like so. See how you can take them and put them pretty much anywhere you want along the dough. Try and get the most pieces out of it as absolutely possible. Now what we'll do first is we'll cut out a couple of pieces for the house. Use a pizza cutter. Pizza cutters are perfect. They're not going to tear through the dough. They'll give you nice straight cuts. Just like this. And see how easy it is to peel off the excess pieces and just get rid of them. And then come back and we do it again on the opposite side. Like so. Then on each side. If you use a knife and drag it through this dough, this is what'll happen. They'll tear up and you'll get an uneven edge, and you don't want that. Okay, we have our two roof segments. We don't have to worry too much about that. We will take care of that. This dough is really, really easy to deal with. And actually, that's a good thing because you'll see how easy it is to repair it. Check this out. We do the same thing with our side pieces. Get rid of all this excess dough. Remember, this dough can be rolled out over and over and over again. And I'm going to leave a little bit of room between them. Do it again. Okay. And then this piece is our front and our back segment. So we'll likewise do the same thing with this. We're going to cut it in the front and we're going to cut it in the back. Now what I always recommend whenever you're baking your pieces off is to make extra segments. That way if one breaks by accident or if it warps or anything weird happens, you're covered and you have the extra piece. And it's no big deal. Also too, the extra pieces can be broken up and given to the kids so that that way they're not tempted to tear into the house after you've done a lot of work decorating it and making it for the holidays. After all, the version of this house, these houses that we're making they're meant to stick around for a little while. They're not meant to be torn up and destroyed, unless, of course, those are your plants. And you can see how easy it is to just take all this dough right out. It's very pliable, doesn't stick, holds its shape, doesn't run, doesn't puff up. There's no leavening agents in it, so it's not going to puff up. It's going to bake out hard like a cookie. This last piece here. Now here's one of the things that you can do is you can take your dough, 
we're going to make the chimney segment separately because we're going to make it thicker. So that's going to bake off at a different rate. We'll put those together. And we're going to straighten these pieces out. Now, one of the things you want to do is if you're cutting out doors or windows, cookie cutters are great for that. Absolutely perfect. And you only need one thing as far as a pastry tip goes for a gingerbread house. A star tip will do the job, just like this. Here's the reasons why. First thing, before you bake it off, you're going to cut a couple of holes in the house right here. And in the back segment, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to poke a hole in it, just like that, with your star tip. Okay, the extra dough we keep, you never know when you're going to need it. For the house, for the windows, we're going to use a little cookie cutter here knock out a couple of windows. And we're going to do the same thing over here. And again, we're going to keep our dough. And then also, too, for the top, here for the front, we're going to use the cookie cutter again and just make it a little bit taller for the door. So we just use it twice. And now we've got a doorway cut out. One of the things I like to do also for my houses to give them extra windows, so I'll do one in the top and the front, and one in the top and the back. Now, you ever notice in the cartoons, the houses are never quite right, they're a little bit off-centered, especially like the Looney Tune houses. So what I always like to do is I'll take my pig to wheel cutter and I will run it across these segments. It makes an uneven line, and the reason it makes an uneven line is because this moves back and forth. And it's perfect because it adds a little cartoonish atmosphere to your gingerbread house. Remember, your gingerbread house, the whole purpose of making this is so that it's literally coming out of an eight-year-old's dreams, the night before Christmas. You know, chaotic, mischievous, funny, familiar, a little bit of everything. So you really want it to be something that they're dreaming about. So you don't want it to be necessarily perfect, like you're trying to enter a contest of some sort. Because that's not really the purpose. The purpose is to have something that everybody's going to enjoy for a long time. So having things that are funny and familiar are very appealing on a general basis. Now what I'm doing here is I'm making a brick pattern by using the tip of this knife and going back and forth and offsetting them so it gives a similar brick pattern to the houses on the sides. Or you can even look at it as planking pieces of wood being put together in different segments as well too. Now for the roof, what we're going to do is we're going to use that same pastry tip and we're going to use the bottom of it this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a shingle effect. We're going to go across the roof in an uneven pattern so we give it a cartoonish shingled look. And it just goes all the way across it. Then we do the same thing in the opposite direction for the other piece. Once we get done decorating it, any imperfections that we may have in the dough will disappear. And you won't even know they're there. And just like that, in a matter of moments, we have all the pieces we need to make a gingerbread house. Pretty easy, huh? Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a knife, cut off this extra paper. No, it's not damaging the counter. And this makes it easy to pull apart and put onto our sheet pans. And also, too, the pieces that are similar in shape and in size can go on the same pans now. It's always important to have flat level sheet pans. Your flat level sheet pans means that the pieces are going to bake evenly and they'll be easier to put together. If the pan is warped, the pieces are going to be uneven and warped and it's going to be harder to put the house together. And we have this one here. And have another one right here. Give her that little extra flour. Remember, flour bakes off as flour, so you really don't want flour on the pans or on the pieces. And there you go. There's your pieces already set, ready to rock and roll. And right into the oven we go. Now I'm doing these at a 350 oven in a wind tunnel, which is equivalent to doing them in a 375 oven. Different ovens vary 
electric ovens, gas ovens, everyone's ovens a little bit different. Your, just, your baking times are general. So keep an eye on them the first time you do this. They may be a little bit faster, they may be a little bit slower, you may roll out the pieces of dough a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner, that will affect the baking time. So again, generalizations, but watch what's going on at the end and you'll be just fine. The pieces are very durable and it's very, very hard to screw them up. So don't worry about it. And even if you do make a mistake, so what? It's part of the fun. You get to eat your mistakes. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to borrow a technique from the carpenters. What we're going to do is we're going to do something called beveling the edges. When we bevel the edges of the house, what we're doing is we're taking the inside and we're putting the angle on it. We're going to do it with a knife. You always use a bigger knife than you think you need to do it with. The reason for this is that if you add more power behind it, you're more likely to crack the house. So you don't want to use a little knife because that's what's going to happen. Use a bigger knife, let the weight of the knife do the job for you. When we bevel it, we start in the middle of the gingerbread house and we work our way to the edges. We turn it around and then we go to the middle and we do it again and work to the other side. We're going to do all four inside corners of the house like this. There's two reasons for doing this. The first reason is the corners will fit together better. The second reason is when we do it, we're going to open up the inside of the house right here. And in here, on the inside of the bread, are air holes. This is what the royal icing is going to grab a hold of. And it's going to hang on to it. This is its grip. It's very important for the house to hold together, opening up these air holes for the royal icing to grab a hold of it. The royal icing is your glue. That's what's going to help hold the house together. And in order to do that efficiently, you want to open up these air holes by beveling the edges. You're going to do that on all four sides of the house. Start in the middle, work your way to the edge. Do this over a garbage can so you don't make a mess. You don't have a garbage can like this to do it at. Do it over a sink. That way you don't have to clean up a mess. Start in the middle, work your way to the edges. You're doing the inside of all four corners. And anything extra, you can trim it right off right now. And there you go. Nice and easy. Straighten them out, make sure that they fit and they're the same size. They fit together just like a model. This is Airplane Building 101. If you had your airplanes and your battleships when you were a kid, this is what it should be looking like. The pieces should all be congruent and fit together. Okay, now before we construct a gingerbread house, we want the best base possible. You do not want cardboard. You do not want plastic. You do not want wood. You want styrofoam. Styrofoam is the best. This is two inch thick insulation. What I did was I cut this down with a knife and two inch thick insulation is perfect. What I did was I cut it on an angle on both sides. Now we have built in handles. Let me pick it up and move it around. In the back, we drill a hole. This is gonna be very necessary because in these gingerbread houses, they're built in the 21st century. In these gingerbread houses, we have lighting on the inside and the outside of our houses. So we want to make sure that there's room for a battery pack. Very, very important. So what we're going to do is we're going to put together a house. Now, I don't know, many times I hear stories about people when they're building their houses, how much trouble they have making them stand up. Well, we're going to solve that problem very, very quickly for everybody right now. You're probably reaching into the cabinet for those cans of tuna fish and boxes of hamburger helper in order to help keep it upright, well, you're not going to need to do that anymore. Styrofoam is the perfect base for a gingerbread house. Not only is it shock absorbent and water resistant, but it also, when it's thick enough like this, doesn't warp and buckle. And it handles the weight of the gingerbread house really well. Also, too, it won't hurt anything. For example, what will happen is, if you put this on a glass top, it's not going to scratch it. If you put it on something that's antique, it's not going to hurt it. Wood surface, not going to harm it. So it's really, really good for all types of situations that you need. Now, we're going to put this house up. Very, very simple and easy to the point. Our battery pack is in the back so that no one's going to see that hole. And we're going to put up one side, and then we're going to put up two sides, and then we're going to put up the third side. And then we're going to put up the fourth side. And you notice that it's standing by itself. No big deal at all. 
Pretty simple, huh? We straighten it out, make sure that it's even, and to make sure the gravity doesn't pull it apart, we're going to use some toothpicks. I'm going to put a toothpick on each side. The toothpick grabs into the styrofoam and gives it just enough tensile strength to hold the pieces firmly in place while the royal icing dries. And now you're done. The house is standing for this three minutes, something like that. No problem at all, huh? Now, if you think that's cool, watch this. Now, one of the things that you want to do with your gingerbread house is put in lights. Here's your battery pack in back. Notice that I taped all the wires down. You want to tape your wires down for two reasons. One, when the house eventually falls apart, you can peel the tape back and save the wires and save the lights. Second part of this is, if you tape the wires down, it won't pop up through the icing when we ice the base and we cover everything up. Now, while you're building your gingerbread house, reach to the back and you make sure your lights are still working. These are still working and oh boy, pretty cool, huh? Pretty easy. Now, the one thing that you never want to do with a gingerbread house when you've built it like this and it's secure and it's dry is you never do this. Because if you do this, it falls off and it hits the floor and breaks into a million pieces. Well, at least that's what I've heard it's supposed to do. But if you build the gingerbread houses like I build the gingerbread houses, that's not going to handle it. The styrofoam is a great base for holding it in place. The styrofoam is porous. The royal icing, we went over this earlier, with the house as you put it together, grabs onto it because it is porous. It does the same thing with the house itself. Nice and solid. Got the hole drilled in the back. We got our house all set and ready to go. And we're gonna get ready to decorate this in no time flat. Okay, now it's time to make the royal icing. The royal icing is your glue. That's what's gonna hold everything together. We're gonna to make it with egg whites and with cream of tartar and with powdered sugar. Now, do not use powdered eggs for either the royal icing or the meringue. You're gonna be seriously disappointed with the results. It's not going to work. We've already got our cream of tartar and our egg whites in here. We're going to add our powdered sugar. Now, this is unlike a lot of other icings that are out there. This is what we're using industrial strength for. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise this up, turn it on, and mix, and get it started. Okay, we turn off the mixer, and then we add more of the powdered sugar. Now remember, don't do this on high when you're first starting, or you're going to be looking like Casper the Ghost. Not a good thing, especially for Christmas. Right? Now you'll notice that I didn't sift powdered sugar. This powdered sugar is fresh, there's no lumps in it, that's not an issue. We're going to make this so heavy and so thick that the mixer will actually beat out any little shipping lumps that occurred for settling while it's in transit, so that's not an issue. The only time you have to worry about anything like that is if any humidity gets to the powdered sugar, then it'll make really hard lumps and they're not going to come out. And that's what'll get stuck in your pastry bag and in your tip. So that part, you want to make sure that there's no hard lumps caused by humidity. But if it's just packing lumps through settling, through shipping, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And we're going to... This recipe costs for three and a half pounds and we are pretty close to what we need to do for two thirds of it right now. Okay, now, you're probably f trying to figure out, how do you know when it's done? Well, here's one good test right here. Never put your finger in there when it's turned on, that's bad. But here you go. Royal icing like this, see how it droops? It's too soft. It should be stiff and it should stick to a peak. This is not even close, this looks like meringue. So, this is not ready. And you add more powdered sugar to it. Now, each one of these bags that I have in my hand is one pound. So actually, it's pretty accurate for me to measure it right now. I'll turn this on again and stiffen it up some more. Take the lip off. Now we're going to check it. We're going to take a little bit of the royal icing, put it between our fingers just like we did earlier. And notice, it holds its peak. Perfect. This is what you're looking for. Exactly what we are looking for. Very, very good. All right. Next, what we're going to do, and this is one of the things that you always want to have around and handy. Always make sure that when you're using your royal icing, you have a damp towel handy. 
reason we want to damp the towel handy is as soon as the air hits the royal icing, it starts to dry out. And that's not good if you're planning on making houses for any length of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have a damp towel handy at all times. We're going to put this over the bowl so that way we don't have to worry about it drying out on us. Now next for us is we are going to do a little bit of coloring with the royal icing so we have more colors for the house. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to use green food coloring and red food coloring. Now, you don't want to use liquids, you want to use pastes. The reason is, if you use liquids, it will thin down the icing. You get the right color, but the icing is too thin. So now what do you do? You add more sugar to it to thicken it up again, now it's the wrong color. So what do you do? You add more liquid to it, now it's thin again. What are you doing? You add more sugar to it. It will make a nightmare out of a simple situation. Use pastes. These jars, made by Wilton, are only a buck and a half a piece. And whatever you don't use will last on your shelf for years. No big deal at all. Very inexpensive. And you can use them for Easter and other holidays too. Not a big deal whatsoever. Very, very easy to do. What we're going to do is just basically take some of this royal icing. And we don't need that much. I'm only going to put a little bit in each bowl. Like so. And like so. more than enough of what we're going to need. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a little pastry technique called striping the bag. Now, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to use some of our red food coloring for this one. And we're going to use our green food coloring for this one. You can see how quickly it works. Got a nice bright color very, very quickly. We don't need much of this because we're going to use this to highlight the rest of the royal icing that we're going to put in our pastry bag. We're going to work it in, make sure that we get all the streaks out, the colors as consistent as possible. Same thing here. We're going to make sure that it's nice and red. Uh, very nice color, nice Christmassy color. Same thing. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty easy to do. And you don't need special spatulas like I have. You can use your butter knives. Why buy something extra when you can use what you have on hand? Okay. I'm going to take these and put them off to the side, move our colorings out of the way. I'm going to open this up, our spatula ready. Now we're going to do something called striping the bag. Striping the bag is a pastry technique used in pastry shops. Pastry, pastry shops. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to open up our pastry bag, and we're going to take our icing, and we're going to make a stripe on the inside. I'm going to reach in, right like this, and we're going to make a stripe, a green stripe, all the way inside. And we're going to have it as close to the tip as we can get within reason, and a little bit thicker and heavier as it gets towards the top of the bag where our hand's going to be. I'm going to open this up for you so you can see that green stripe in there. Okay? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing with the red on the opposite side of the bag. That way there will be plenty of white icing in between the two and they won't mix together and you won't get brown. Now as far as like technique goes, what we're going to do is we're going to do simple shell borders here with a star tip. That way everybody that's watching this video can do it. Okay? And we'll see. two stripes, green and red. Now we take our white royal icing and we put this in the center and we fill the bag with white, white royal, royal icing.
right, we've turned off our meringue and it's ready to rock and roll. Very easy to do. Put everything in, whip it to a peak. And you'll notice that it's nice and soft and pliable and it's got some elasticity to it. Exactly what we're looking for. The meringue takes longer to dry out than the royal icing. The meringue will take a full day to dry out. The royal icing can be dry and hard in about six hours. Hard enough for you to actually erect the house and finish it, start to finish. So keep that in mind. Give the royal icing a chance to set up and harden before you put the roof on and finish anything else on. Something tells me the roof segments are ready for this house. And my guess is right. How about that? They come out very nice and even. Notice there's no bubbling, no puffing. Very, very nice. We'll put them on this nice marble counter here. Cool off quickly. Notice how flat and even they are. Now, if your baking pans are a little bit uneven, what you can do is take them off the sheet pan immediately and put them on your counter. And while they're hot, they'll self-level and they'll go together a lot easier. Now it's time to make the house. So what we're going to do is we are going to not only light it because it's the 21st century from the outside, but we're also going to light it from the inside. Now, the little hole that we cut in the back right here, that's how we're going to light this from the inside. Buy ourselves a little tea light at the store. We turn it on, we put it in the inside, and you can see where that light is right there. That's what's going to light the inside. A lot of times when people build gingerbread houses, they put lights on the inside that are way too powerful. And what happens is they throw off too much heat, dries out the gingerbread house, the gingerbread house pops apart and falls apart. Remember, this is food. You can't treat it like a plastic model. You gotta treat it like food. Food is a highly unstable item. So we got to do certain things to make sure that it stays as stable as possible without treating it like a model. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to light it on the inside of one of these. But the inside of the house is brown, and that's not very conducive to reflecting light. So for a small light like that, what we're going to do is we're going to stucco the inside of it. And we're going to change the interior from brown to white by using the meringue. The meringue spreads easy. It finishes in a semi-gloss, just like a good paint, and it's easy to apply, and what it does is it makes the entire inside of the house congruent. It's easy to apply, covers all the imperfections, and it makes for a nice reflective surface, so that little light goes a lot farther. And you can see how simple this is to spread and put in place. Now again, you don't need any special tools to do this. You can do this with a butter knife, you can do this with a little spatula, very simple. You can even do this with a steak knife that will ground it. This also covers up the royal icing seams on the inside. Very, very, very effective way of dealing with this. And we've got these nice big windows here so you're able to see everything that's going on on the inside of the house. So when we build our houses, we build the inside of the house first, and then we take care of the outside. So what we're going to do here is make sure that the inside is covered evenly. And don't worry about having any extra icing on the windows, on any of the holes, because it's easily removable. It's no big deal at all. It means nothing. And pretty soon, within just a couple of minutes, the entire inside of the house is gone. We're also going to do the floor with the meringue as well too. And if you spill a little meringue here and there, you know what, that's part of the fun. Because this is a family event for the most part, and the kids can have fun licking it off the counters. Uncle Bob can have fun licking it off the counters after he's had a couple of margaritas. There we go. You see, how simple that is. Inside of the house, nice and light. Very, very reflective for what we're going to be doing. Now we're also going to do the floor as well. So we we'll reach in through the front door and we'll spread the meringue all over the face too. This way, the entire inside is nice and reflective. And it's pretty easy to spread everything around and to get into all the corners and mix and the corners. So no big deal. Uh, even if you miss a spot, it's certainly not going to be the end of it. Okay. And 
windows here. A little extra meringue on the windows. A little freshly plumbed snow effect. Likewise, same thing here. And over here. Do the same thing. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to decorate the inside of the house. We're going to do that first. Now for everything in the inside of the house to stay put, what we have to do is make sure it's going to stay put. So we're going to use some royal icing for that. Now in here we've got our little basket of goodies that we're going to use to decorate the inside of the house and the outside of the house. So what we like to do in my houses is put characters on the inside doing cool stuff. So in this particular house, we're going to give them a Christmas tree. I'm going to put that in the center so everyone can check it out. Now if you got a Christmas tree in a house, you're going to need some gifts. So we got some miniature gifts to put under the tree. And don't worry about getting anything on your hands. It's no big deal. It happens all the time. And we got a little spaceship here. Maybe that's for the coming Star Trek movie. And a little Annie for nostalgia. And a couple of jet fighters for the boys. And maybe even for the girls. And we got another little prize here, wrapped up. And we have a cool sock to hang. Actually, we have a couple of them. All right, then. And we've got some really cool guys to put on the inside. For example, we got this teddy bear to put in. We'll get him in here. And we've got a really neat snowman, so we're going to get him in here. And we've definitely got Tasmanian Devil. Always cool. We'll get him in here. He's busy. And last but not least, we have a moose. Mooses are cool. We get a moose in there. It's always neat to have as much activity as possible within the house. That way, it doesn't get boring to the people that see it for the first time. And also, too, what I like to do in my house is I like to hide stuff in them. Because that way, when somebody sees it for the first time, they don't see everything. And the next time they check it out, they go, oh, wow, I didn't see that before, man. Where'd that come from? So I always like to have them busy and active. There we go. The inside of the house is already set, ready to rock and roll. Just like that. How simple is that, huh? Only took a couple minutes. Now, you're probably wondering, why did we punch those holes in the roof? Well, you're going to find out. See those holes? They line up nicely. What we're going to do is we're going to take some string, and we're going to run them through those holes from one side to the other side. We're going to do it for both of them. And we're going to do a simple little knot on each one. Nothing special, never tight. To a tight, you break them. This is what's going to hold them in place while the icing dries to keep it from sliding off of the house. Okay? We'll let that sit there for a minute. We're going to do the outside of the house now. We're going to decorate the grounds. This is the cool part, this is the ground keeping part. First thing we're going to do is we are going to use our meringue to cover the base. This is something that takes place very, very quickly. And it takes a couple of seconds to do this. And you'll notice how quickly and easily the meringue covers the entire base. All of this tape, all of the electric wires, everything gets covered up very, very evenly and very, very quickly by the meringue. It's excellent for this job keeps its nice luster and it doesn't dry out the same way that the royal icing dries out. And it spreads so easy. And again, remember, this is going to take at least a day to dry out. So while it's drying out, if you're not sure that it's dry, don't test it in the front of the house because that's where you're going to leave your fingerprint. And you get to look at it all the time. Test it in the back of the house because the back of the house is going to dry out at the same rate as the front of the house. Now when you're choosing your candies to put on here to decorate along with these figures, don't choose cheap candy. You don't want jelly belly beans and juju beans and anything like that because it's going to look cheap and it's going to look old right away. You want to stick with hard rock candy. Hard rock candy is going to hold its color better and it's going to be much more resistant to humidity. The two enemies that gingerbread houses have are heat and humidity. Humidity will melt the sugar, heat will dry it out and cause it to pop apart. If you 
you have any questions that you feel are not answered at this point in time, check your directions. They will they basically confirm everything that I'm telling you, especially for storage. You want to check out the storage? These houses will last three to five years without any problems whatsoever. Very, very durable. In fact, I drive my houses around on a regular basis, and you're going to see all kinds of really cool houses very, very shortly that I've built over the years. Some of them are two years old. You gotta remember that I drive around with them and go from class to class and program to program with them. So they take a beating on the Chicago highways and the transit areas, you know, the side roads, potholes. So they get shook up really good. With all that shaking and buzzing that's going on with them driving around, the stop and goes, uh, they prove to be very, very durable. Very durable. I've even had a couple of them go flying off the seats from people that have cut me off in traffic. And I've been able to just take them and put them right back in place like nothing happened. So again, this is a very, very durable house, very, very rugged. And you'll be able to do quite a bit with it. And just like that, check it out, the base is done. It only takes a matter of seconds. Pretty easy, huh? We'll move this out of the way. And now we're going to get to decorating. Now one of the things I always like to do is use different types of candies. In this particular instance, I'm going to be using candy canes and some hard rock candy and what they refer to as reindeer corn. Now the reindeer corn, what I think we're going to do with this is we're going to make a little pathway. And it's pretty easy to make a pathway with this stuff. Alternating it from color to color and you can make a little walkway going right into your house. So it's a really neat way to add a lot of color to the house in a very inexpensive manner. Remember, these houses don't have to cost you a fortune. There's lots of ways to do this without spending an arm and a leg. And that's the whole purpose of doing this, is to have fun and not, you know, empty the bank account doing it. And here we go. This is a pretty neat way of giving yourselves a real nice little personal touch. Notice how quickly these fall in place. It's a very, very simple little method. And the meringue is more than strong enough to hold this in place without it going. In. So you don't have to worry about them popping off. The only thing you have to worry about is somebody trying to pry them off and eat them. Now, if you want to put a candy cane on here, it's real simple. All you have to do is take a toothpick and poke a hole in the base. And take a candy cane and put it in the hole. Now it doesn't go anywhere. Now you don't have to worry about it falling over because it's on cardboard or wood or plastic because you can't poke holes in it. So here's your answer to that problem. Very simple and to the point. Now over here on the sides, what we'll do is we're going to take some more icing so this stuff doesn't go anywhere. We'll make a little line. And we'll take advantage of that line. We'll take some of our hard rock candies and we'll make ourselves a fence. Now we've got some extra color here. And you can vary your patterns, you can vary the types of candy you use. It's really up to you. These houses are just geared to give you ideas on what to do, not how to tell you how to decorate. This is just to inspire you so you can figure out things that you want to do. Maybe, for example, you want to do a sports theme, or you want to do something that involves, for example, a typical uh, maybe music theme, or it's all musical things on there. Whatever you know trips your trigger, that's what you should do because it's your house. All right, we'll get this little meringue out of this hole in the back with a lightning bolt. We're all set there. That's cool. Wow. It's getting there very quick, isn't it? Now, in order to make this more congruent, this tree, so it fits in, what I will do is I will take and I will put meringue all over the base. This way, it will blend right in to all the rest of the meringue that's on this already. Take a little bit of royal icing, put it on the bottom for extra glue, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And just like that, it becomes one with the scenery. Very simple and to the point. And all you do is put a little drum in here. Snoopy's always cool. Snoopy and Matchy here. Hope we better give him a little extra royal icing so he doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Now here's a neat one. This is a little 
clock, and we're going to take this and we're going to put this in the back of the gingerbread house. This is a neat, you can get all sorts of really cool miniature stuff all over the place. It's amazing. And this stuff does not cost much money at all. It's very, very inexpensive and really adds all kinds of nice little personality to what you're doing. And we have another Christmas tree out here, so we gotta get some prizes and some gifts underneath it. Oh, we got a nice little Ferrari there. And we've got some more spaceships. Spaceships are always cool this time of year. We got another stuffed animal and some more wrap gifts. These little miniature gifts are easy to find and they're very inexpensive. It's no big deal at all. And we got a cool snowman. We're gonna use him. He's always neat. We'll put him up in the corner. Now, one of the things that I really like to do with these is you can get these figures. These figures are wrapped around pencils and pens. Notice how they got the holes in them? Well, what you do with them is you get one and you split it. Split each loop once. Then you take a candy cane and you push it right through. With it split, it'll fit the candy cane. Then you come back and you get your little Toothpick and the little skewer works great. And then, put them in place. Just like that, you got a really cool little figure to go on there too. Something completely different that you don't see very often. And it's not going to go anywhere. Really neat stuff. Very, very simple to do. I like these little chocolate balls. They're nice for fillers. They take up space. And they're much less expensive than going out and buying a lot of pieces. I like to have stuff going on all around the house. So I'll put some stuff back here. And what I like to do is use these little forklifts. And with this particular forklift, I think we're going to give it this particular little gift. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this back here. And the reason we're going to put that back here is because we have Marvin the Martian. Marvin the Martian is always cool. And he's got his sled ready. And he's going to make sure that he's getting this extra package to go loading up his sleigh. Um, we just happen to have this little sign here, Winter Village. This is always neat. We'll put this right in the front. Again, we cover the base with meringue. And just like that, you got a nice little sign out there. It tells everybody what it is and what's going on. Now, a house like this wouldn't be a house without Santa. At least, I don't think it would be. So we'll make sure that we have Santa right at the door, greeting everybody. How's that? Cool? And we have the snowmen to go up here. Snowmen are always cool, and they're always in season. We got another little engine, and flat figures are really cool. Flat figures go well on the houses themselves. So you can actually take a snowman and put them right on the house just like that. Since we like to have action all over the place, Oops, I don't want that. I don't want this one. Since we like to have action all over the place, make sure that we got something going on back here too. So we don't want any part of it being untouched, so to speak. And we've got a neat hollow body. This is an antique. This was made in the 1950s. In the 1950s, when they made figures like this, they were hollow. They would take two halves, cast them, and then we put the two halves together. That's why they were hollow. It wasn't mold injection. So whenever you see the hollow figures like this, you know they're old because it's long, long, long outdated. This is one of the original elves from Snow White, the Seven Dwarfs. And we're going to use him on this house too, and we're going to give him a seat right here. Cool. There we go. Turn him over there. That's better. All right then. And we're going to make sure that our light works in the back of the house in place and we got room to put it in place and this is good so no big deal we wipe off the excess meringue comes right off don't ever worry about getting meringue nice and easy it's a little bit and we got a package over here for him which is cool and let's see what else do we have oh we gotta be able to pay our bills this is important so we have to have a chest of gold one of these little tooth savers. 
for the tooth fairy. We fill it with some yellow sugar, and now we've got our chest of cold, and we can pay our bills and keep foreclosure at a distance, which is good. And we've got a couple of chocolate bills to go with everything here. And we are almost ready to call it a day because we're running out of room. So we've got some room over here. We're gonna poke a nice hole, a nice size hole here. Okay. And now we've got room for another candy cane. There we go. Pretty easy and to the point, huh? Now we can take a couple of these candies and put them back here around the house and give it a little bit more color. Offsets everything a little bit. You can see how simple this is and how easy it is to fill in with very, very minimal things. Yeah, let's put him over here. That's cool. All right then, just like that. Pretty simple and to the point. Now it's time to put the roof on. Putting the roof on is easy. Watch this. I'm going to put our royal icing in place here and here. I'm going to spin it around and do the royal icing here and here. Next, the roof itself. We take it and we put it in place. The edges are already beveled. And a little bit of string that we have here, we tie a simple knot, we come back here, straighten it out a little bit, and we tie a simple knot again. The roof goes nowhere. Never cut the excess string with a knife. You can tug on it and you can crack the roof. Always use the scissors. And now you can see why it's so simple put together one of my gingerbread houses. And here we go. One more time. We're going to take our icing that's striped for our decoration. Now we're going to squeeze a little bit out first so that we know that it's going to come out the color scheme that we want. Alright, now we're ready to use our stripe bag to decorate the roof. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up here and cover the scene. Here and cover the seam. Okay, let's spin it around. Do the same back here. And once again, how simple that is. Now you can control wherever the color comes out by just turning the bag. What we'll do here is. Notice I was able to control the motion with just one hand. That's because the bag wasn't overfilled. And then we'll do it again here. And then again here. Spin it around. Here. And here. Very simple and to the point. Now we'll do a little pattern down the sides. Slightly, and we'll have a different pattern just by turning the bag. And then one more time. Easy. Now we're going to do something, we're going to make this a little bit more individual than other houses. So, what we'll do is a little bit of icing on the back side of one of our candy canes. And we'll do the same thing again in the opposite direction. Don't worry about the extra icing. It's no big deal. In fact, actually, we want the extra icing on it. We're going to make a heart. We'll do the same thing again on this side. Now we have a nice little signature. It's good karma having gingerbread houses with a heart on them. It's very good karma. 
Okay. We'll do the same thing again. Oops. Yes. Like so. Cool. Now you're probably wondering, ooh, gee, how do you get all that icing off? Well, what we do is we take it off like this. We get rid of this. Just scrape it off. Clean it up. Only takes a second. Heart's not going to go anywhere. And all of a sudden, it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot nicer. And much more distinct. Cool. And we do the same thing on this side. It's not going to affect whether the power stays on here or not, because it's already got plenty of ice underneath to keep it in place. We're just getting rid of the extra stuff that doesn't need anything. Cool. Now, we need activity all over the house because that's cool. So what we're going to do is, we're going to have activity on the roof. So we've got a cue pad working here, and we have Mickey, Mini Mickey, Bird of Peace is always cool. Cardinals are always in season, unless, of course, you're a Cubs fan. And we'll put him inside here. Let's see if he fits. Nope, he's not going to fit. So we're going to change it. Another thing that we're going to do here is we're going to put a little shot of white ice in here. We're going to put Scooby in place. Now we've got some Scooby action. This is a good thing. Now we also have some really nice little icing lifts that you can buy in a store by the package. And this is a great way to decorate the house and it keeps you from getting into involved pastry work. You can buy these packages for a couple of bucks a piece. It's no big deal at all. They're really easy and simple to come across. You know, buy whatever's in your area that's neat and appeals to you. And we'll do the same thing on this side, in the same order. And we like that little hand homemade look to this. We don't want it to look like it came out of a machine shop, you know, a pastry shop that made 700 of them and put them all on pizza circles with, you know, the really cheap Santa Claus and all that. We don't want that. So cool. The house is almost finished, but it's missing something. It's missing freshly fallen snow. So we supply that very easily. This will also help dry the rain. And just like that, you have a gingerbread house that is very cool. And lit from the inside. Okay, the lights are down, but also the lights are up. I'm going to show you some of the variations with the same templates and the same recipes that we just put together now to make the houses. This is some of the great stuff that you can do with what you just got put down in front of you. This is what I refer to as my bipolar house. It is a Hanukkah house on this side, and it is a traditional gingerbread house on this side. And you'll notice that on the inside here, we have a second floor. And on the inside of this one, there's a party going on. So this actually has bi-level partying going on. It's lit from the inside, and it's even got an ice skating pond on this side as well, too. So you can see Snoopy over there, and we've always got a pink flamingo handy whenever possible. And when was the last time you saw Snoopy with a yarmulke? Now uh, there you're saying something.
over here every year because we're part of a jet ski team and because of the freestyling we do in the water, we always have an homage to our sport. This is our beach house. We've done the base with meringue, but we topped it with yellow cornmeal for the sand effect. And the roof is shredded wheat for that nice little Polynesian look that we're looking for. And of course, we have the obligatory self-proclamation of who did the house. Very, very cool stuff, one-of-a-kind figures, lit from the inside and the out. And you'll see that we've got our jet skis on here. We've even got a little tiki god over one of the lights on the base. Now, yeah, really cool stuff, Bart Simpson. And this is one of the original little McDonald's giveaways from years and years ago. So we've got some really cool stuff on here. Again, one-of-a-kind figures, gives it a nice little personality all into itself. Okay, now we have two more variations of the same pattern. Here we have Snoopy's doghouse. We have a large Snoopy on here, a big cutout, and on the inside of it, we have Snoopy and his law lit up, and the inside's lit up. So you can see, decorated on the inside, decorated on the outside, a different theme, same cutouts, same house. Very simple to do. Over here, this one is my political statement. This one is called A Sign of the Times. It seems that the elves have lost their lease and are being evicted, and all their furniture is on the front lawn, as the highway crew is coming in to bulldoze their house and take it over so they can expand the interstate. Notice that the house is decorated with a very nice Christmas tree with blinking lights, the inside lit up again, and we have some very, very active scenes going on here. Even in the back, we have dog and the kid playing the little classic version and also too we have Cookie Monster inside of a garbage can. It's very very cool stuff. It's all up to your imagination on what you want to do and how you want to do it. And of course if you're going to have all your stuff on the front lawn you have to have a toilet on the front lawn too.
<laughs> okay, it doesn't matter what holidays you're celebrating, whether it's Halloween, whether it's summer party, or whether it's Christmas, or whether it's Hanukkah. These houses are good for all occasions. It's only limited by your imagination. And hopefully with what you've been able to see here today, your imagination is now peaked. I say go for it. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Be creative. Do what you wish with them. If you have any further questions, you can always visit me at my home site, at my website, at freecookingprograms.com. Look forward to hearing from you. Alright, it's now time for the next two contestants for Coolest House in this DVD. Two of my personal favorites. This one, in particular, is an homage to my eBay store. Now, this is a toy soldier gingerbread house. You can see, on this side, we have a row of homies. The homies represent the recruits. And we have all of our soldiers here on the left. We have artillery units. We have cavalry and infantry, and they're all getting ready for the holidays. It's basically an homage to March of the Toy Soldiers. And again, one of my favorite themes for the holidays. You can see lots of activity on the roof with Homer Simpson and Snoopy up here, surfing Santa, and we have, of course, the Air Force in full view of everybody. Over here, Halloween. Halloween is very, very cool for gingerbread houses. I've been doing Halloween gingerbread houses for about 10 years, long before anyone else had the idea of it. And I have a ton of fun with this. This is one of my favorite gingerbread houses right now. The base, done the same as the others, but all we did was we colored the meringue black. So it comes out a dark gray. That way it's not as easy to see through all the Oreo cookie crumbs that we ground up and used for dirt. Here you see our security force from Lost in Space, the robot. And we have Garfield in the front, and we have Snoopy and the Grinch. And we have a lot of characters from Halloween Town. Very, very cool stuff. We've got a rock and roll monster band down there entertaining everybody. And of course, we've got Spider-Man and Tigger. And we've got Jack from Halloween Town in the house inside our tree here. And we've just got all kinds of activity going around, all around the house. And the inside of the house, we've got a party going on that you can see when you get closer with the lamps. And again, Halloween, one of my favorite subjects. We did our roof shingled effect with Necco wafers. And the cool part about doing the Necco wafers is if you do a couple of gingerbread houses, the black and the orange ones and the gray ones and the brown ones, they work really well for Halloween. And then the rest of them, the red and the yellow and the blue and the green, work really well for Christmas. So you can actually separate them and put a half for one and half for the other. So this is a really cool thing to be doing for Halloween. And again, one of my favorite subjects, Halloween. And of course, we have these stones here for our garden effect. This is actually Italian rock candy. So you can use all sorts of really cool stuff here. It's just limited by your imagination. Okay. All right. Now you're probably wondering, where do you get all these cool accessories to make these houses? Well, the first place you want to go to is Walgreens. Walgreens has an incredible selection of these miniature lights and small figures, and hard rock candies too, and chocolates. So a very, very good place to start is Walgreens. Second place you want to start, Michael's. Michael's Crafts has excellent miniature lights and figures. Two great spots to look for. Other stores that carry things like this, you're looking at Target. Even gas stations have these little figures at the checkout station. All you have to do is just keep thinking miniature. Dollar stores, real good source to find things. Now that we know where to look for some of these stuff in scavenging, 
Now we want to know how do you store them. Real, real easy. Gingerbread houses hate heat. They also hate moisture. Don't want either one of them. So what you want to do is take the batteries out of your light compartments so that they don't burst on you while in storage. And then what you want to do is you want to take these, put them inside of a box, plastic tote even better. Slide the entire thing into a garbage bag that it will fit into that you can tie off airtight with a twist tie. Perfect. In the basement, excellent. Attic, not so good. It's very hot. Crawl space, perfect. As long as you don't have any problems with critters, you're in really good shape. You don't have to worry about chewing through bags or anything like that. They will last two to three years without any issues, maybe four, five, six years, depending on how well they're stored. If something pops off, instead of making more royal icing to put it back in place, <clears throat> just go and get a tube of Elver's glue and stick it back in place. Remember, these are being made as decorations. They're not being made to eat. So, using a little armor's glue to stick something back in place instead of going through the trouble of making royal icing for one or two pieces is fine. Maybe they need a little touch up with some meringue down the road. That's no big deal. That's easy to deal with too. When the time comes when the house eventually falls apart and you can't use it anymore, poke all the figures off of it and soak them in warm water. All the icing that's on them will melt right off. And you won't have any issues with them and they'll be cleaned up and then you get to keep them as keepsakes and then use them for the next house if you so desire. If anything, you have nice mementos and you have figures and pieces that are no longer an issue because the way things are manufactured now, they're out of date very quickly, so all of a sudden they become keepsakes just through situation. So the main thing is enjoy, have fun, and go for it. My name is Michael Nixick. I'm also known as the Food Mercenary. You just watched how to build really cool gingerbread houses, and hopefully your gingerbread houses are going to be just as cool for yourself.